anticipating coming into this entire season. I was thinking these were going to be two of the best teams uh, coming into it. And along with that, we got a chance to actually sit down for a little while with Insania to talk about the teams that he felt like he was most excited to play against in this region. I think it would be disrespectful to say that Tundra won't be the hardest team to beat this season. They just won TI, and um, even though I think we've historically been pretty good against them, I think, you know, with Malta being out, who knows, teams is going to be very different. So, uh, yeah, I think there will be the, the toughest matchup. Well, he anticipated that this was going to be the toughest matchup. Not that bold of a prediction, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they just went TI, to be fair. But I think the, the respect comes from the fact that Liquid, they beat Tundra in every single tour right. know, last year, right? So the first tour is like 2-0, then it was a 2-1, then another 2-1. So it got a little bit harder for Liquid, but they also never played at TI. Right. So they never got to maybe get that Western European rivalry at the TI, maybe punish them a little bit. So for Liquid, it's still respect. They have Tundra's number historically, but do they have the, their number now? It's uh, Draft-wise, it feels like they do. This is the style of uh, draft that has lost to Tundra. But, you know, eSports bet. .io, not believing in the, uh, the odds. Uh, they're, yeah. they're, they're going easy with the TI winners. You know, it's interesting. The TI dynamic is also something that I think is worth thinking about a little bit more because it was multiple times it was one series away. That was what was so crazy about it to me. In the upper bracket, they were one away from each other. Obviously, Liquid ended up losing to Aster. And then it came down to that grand, to the lower bracket finals uh, where Liquid were one away from facing them again and Secret were able to knock them out. So now that they're finally battling here, I think if Liquid win, Tundra have to give them all the money. <laughs> um, that's the way that works. What is it, like $8 million? Yeah, yeah something this, like this that. This is an $8 million series? That's kind of <laughs> hype, actually. Didn't realize we had that. the stakes on this one. All right, we'll keep our eyes on it. Lane matchups, anything you're seeing that really scares you here? Uh, again, every time I see the mid lane of uh, Nisha and Nine, it's who kind of a little bit more explosive. Nisha, stats-wise, he is a little bit more of a farm-intensive mid laner. That could open up Nine to just kind of break that open the fun. game. I think for, for Tundra, they need that kind of X factor because the, the, the side lanes of Liquid are very defensive in nature. You've got Tree enabling the Ursa, Rubik protecting the Darks here. So yeah, this mid lane matchup is going to be somewhat critical to break the game open for either team. And we did see Nine, uh, you know, struggle a little bit in the mid last time when they were playing against Sumail. Um, he definitely got sort of the, the business end handed it to him for a little bit there. Um, but looking to try and obviously right the ship a little bit here. Um, and so far, seven and one versus two and zero. Oh. Um, it was like the, I think Fog was saying it on the panel as well that it's sort of a different style of of mid where he's more about those movements later on. Um, but we'll keep our eyes on it as Snaking and Skitter up top battling it out and actually get some good damage here on the thirty three. It's gonna get walking away. Yeah, this is a such a potent bot lane. It's why you see Tree being so popular. You have the stick. You go for Leech Seed. I think a lot of the Old school tree and protectors before it became meta. It's all about leech, uh, sorry, the nature's grasp and the living armor. But now that we're seeing them go even two points uh, into leech seed, it allows you just to continue bullying. So for for Tundra in this off lane, they are the ones that are going to get aggressed on and get punished. Well, we'll see if uh, they can sort of weather through that storm of it. Um, I kind of want to keep an eye on this Zai build, what he decides to go for for the Darkseer. Uh, already looking like he's off to a pretty good start. Already 8-1 uh, and one on the last hits and is queuing up the Ring of Health. Can go into Vanguard, Hood, whatever he wants to do there. Yeah, there's the, the Vanguard into Disassemble. Maybe get, I feel like the Lotus Orb later down the line against Tundra. It's a lot of single target spells, so having that value Lotus Orb will be pretty helpful. And Vanguard in lane at least. It opens up your hero to be more independent. And I think a lot of these top teams, once they free up their supports to start making moves on the map, that's what's going to allow Nisha on this Lesh Rack to start thinking about moving forward into the map, take away that jungle. Because again, Tundra's lineup this time around, it's less about the play the entire map. It's more Beastmaster push one lane and constantly look for the fight after that. So both, both lineups are going to be refreshingly aggressive throughout this entire game. Boxy getting brought down lower and lower, but they pull him back in. The double the iron it. shell, it's going to be enough. Boxy goes down there and snaking, uh, able to draw that first blood. Nicely played. So Liquid getting done what they need to get done here. And uh, again, keeping our eyes on this type of a beginning, you're hoping to find a first blood there with the Darkseer double iron shell, but couldn't make it happen. Yeah, unfortunately, Boxy was the one going down. Uh, it's it's interesting too because the switch up of him 
Uh, I feel like I never see Boxy play Rubik because it's always insane, right? <laughs> that is true. I mean, when you're one of the be better Rubik players on Fiverr on your team, you kind of want to relegate it down there. But the way that these Rubik players have been popping off on four, you kind of want it to have more farm priority, have the eighth lens, have the extra cast range, go for the shard, save your heroes, but also be aggressive. And pulling him back in now. It's a little bit of separation there, and that's going to make sure he's fine and dandy. I think so far Zai's going to be pretty happy in this lane. Sure, CMCK is a pretty potent lane, but the fact that it's been in you know, a boxy one going down, Zai's continued to keep up his levels, about to hit level four. It will get to a point where Tundra will have to get kicked out of the lane, and you just can't really kill off this hero, unless maybe, with, uh, if they're too close to the tower, some Tusk TP in, quick shards, disjoint that surge away. That's when they might be going down, but yeah, I think Liquid are going to be extremely happy with how the lanes are going so far. Well, speaking of Tusk... Uh, I didn't want to mention it. <laughs> I was trying my best. Yeah, it's it's looking a little rough for our guy Nine here. I mean, again, if you're Liquid, not that they like had problems in the mid, but part of the reason you bring in niches is because he's such a talented mid player. He's looking amazing here. It's... 24 for 12 for the 13 and 3. This is not a mismatch you normally see from uh, from mid lane, and it's coming from the fact that Nisha is such a you know talented player. For 9, it's going to delay his ability to make moves on the map. It's going to delay his ability to really just just enter the game. So for Tundra, now in the back of their minds, if 9's communicating this, who's going to make that first move to help them? Nikkei jumps in, gets a big round of stacks there on to the Dark Willow, won't be able to get the kill, and in fact, Oxa, Stevie's back in, well, he's still got those stacks on him, as Insania drops lower and lower, he's kiting out through the trees, but Mickey goes in, a little bit of an answer to that question as, oh, Mickey. oh, it is enough, 33 gets the return kill, that's huge, Zai up top, is trying to get a little aggro there, pulling the creep wave, it looks like he's going to be fine, but the kill on to Mickey. That is so worth for 33, like Saxa, he's kind of being a bit cheeky there with the TP, you think maybe he's TPing back to base, but no, he goes to the tower instantly able to kind of re-engage in the fight. And for Beastmaster, at least in these aggressive lanes, he just wants to accelerate his timing to get to the, the Helm of the Dominator. Once he picks up that, that's when he's self-sufficient. That's when Willow can be a little bit more active on the map, or even Tusk can move in to play on that creep to take away that tower and to open up the game. Because we've already mentioned it, Leshrac v the Tusk in mid lane, it is so Leshrac favored, it is not good to see. Ooh, and Zai. Pops the Surge now, will manage Ooh. to get that run away. Always a very scary situation. You get stunned with the CM in the lane there. Um, but you can see that even though the Ursa dies, still very much keeping up with that CK, and in fact gonna get ahead of him as the Creep Wave is pushing underneath the Ursa's tower because they were able to keep that wave away from it. Yeah, I mean, Nisenia did the thing that most pub players don't do. If the carry dies, they'll drag it into tower and take everything for themselves. Oh, but, yeah. You know, of course, Nisenia, <laughs> he's Classic. trying to win the game. He's trying to beat TI uh, Champions Tundra. He's going to keep the creeps away from the tower. Wow, and that gold lead. Uh, just a couple of extra runes there, it looks like. So we'll see how this one goes. 33 tries to run away. Mickey just setting up for a future go, potentially. And see that Sox had getting a hold of some of those. Man, Snake King is uh, really doing a good job of just sort of continuing to bully over here. And in fact, if they burn through these raindrops now on Zai with the rotation coming in, they call it out. So yeah, Nisha knew that they were uh, heading over that way. And make sure that his team is not going to get caught unawares. Yeah, it's nice, uh, nice call up from Nisha. They don't, they don't have any vision on the top side of the map from Liquid. So that's purely just Nisha saying nine is missing for a period of time. They haven't scouted the map bottom because the lane's somewhat closer to the tower. So yeah, just kind of making the assumptions there, and they are the correct ones, preventing Liquid from getting picked off. It's kind of how nine often gets back into these games when right. he's a little bit behind. It's just this walk to a lane, try and go for the, the hail mary. And you see there, Nine instantly throwing down the sentry. He's expecting there. There has to be some vision or something, but no, it's just, yeah, Nisha with the callouts. Okay, well, so far, uh, so good. Misses on that stun. Nine sticks around, but Nisha, the one that bottles the invis, that keeps him alive. But with the sentry already down, needs to be a little bit careful about this. Running up high ground, finds one. Snaking gets stunned, the lift back. Pulls him in for the kill. The root will be there on Anisha. Almost enough damage all over the tree armor. He actually just roars him. The Fus Roda, rarely seen but much appreciated for the kill. Yeah, too many times players have not used that roar there, and he's just lived. And it's like, no, we gotta kill him. He's having two great of a game. 53, 14, 
getting a couple kills, getting the double. Yeah, it's yeah, you gotta shut him down. But for Tundra at least, that this is a level of respect that they bring to a game because Beastmaster just pitched his, his Dominator. He could have been in lane, maybe pressuring Ursa, but no. Instead, he walks towards mid lane, preemptively expecting this to be a hard engagement. Oh, yeah, and uh, knew that there was going to be that battle going on. I mean. Even still, it's very much just a sort of scrappy back and forth type of matchup that we've got here. And already a Helm of the Dominator creep completed. Ursa trying to run that one down, but Nisha making these moves around the map. Dark Willow will not be saved by the Shadow Realm. Soxa goes down. Nisha, another kill for him. Nice juke from the left right there, too, you know. Dodging and weaving those, uh, those, those roots up. An instant TP back in. Again, the efficiency from both teams right now, it's the unlocking the mid lane. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he looks pretty dead. He's pretty dead. There you go. Oh, the Iron Shell, though. He's going to run down snaking. Snaking, there's no <laughs> escape. Oh, Skitter, why have you forsaken me with your illusion? <laughs> Poor. He, he, oh, he had a mango, but, you know, Frostbite, of course, was on cooldown, so he had nothing to, to try and disengage from that. Dude, that's the best feeling in the world as yeah, a Darkseer player. Feeling, yeah. <laughs> it's like, the support's just been annoying you all game. You get level six, like, yeah, that's your carry. It's better when you do it with the illusion of themselves, you know? It's oh, like, yeah. yeah. But, you know, yeah, you'll take a CK illusion when you can, and that's going to be somewhat the theme of the game, at least for, for Zayats. If you take over the CK, you've got this big right clicker. <laughs> take over Beast, you're going to have an aura. Like, you're going to feel comfortable Ooh. no matter what you get. DD for nine. Shards that were stolen and by Boxy, Snowball. Now he's on to one, but he already used his Walrus Punch. Nine has gone in a bit too far. Does not want to chase that on Nisha, knowing all the heroes that are in the area. So they'll back out. Still less than a 1,000 gold separating these two teams. Five to five. I'm telling you, this is the type of matchup that I was hoping we'd get. A little good stuff to start. I mean, the perfect thing here from Liquid, at least, is they're mirroring Tundra in their play, right? Draft-wise, you've now got both the side link cores tanky enough that they can just you know, sufficiently push out the lanes without threat. So now the supports are unlocking their mid lanes. You've got the tree, the Rubik running with the with the left rack. And look at the smokes wise as well. They're literally copying each other. Tundra moves from mid to bot. Liquid moves from, you know, mid to top. So yeah, both trying to find the same thing. But Mickey in rage, ready, but it's going to come too late. So he won't even be able to pop it really. Skitter, he gets out. So the movement that they both copy ends up bearing more fruit for Tundra. And they're the small efficiencies which allows Tundra to kind of just creep ahead of their opponents, right? It's the speed in which they react to the moves. Even before they're too obvious, it's they're making the plays. And four heroes now into mid tower. Are they going to try and pressure it? But... I mean, it definitely feels like it. Uh, they're all here. I think that they were maybe just waiting for somebody to show up, but Nine keeping this catapult alive. I mean, with the tree, there's no way they get this. And in fact, Nine, he's in trouble. The root. Now with Mickey right on top. Oh, but the Mickey. counter root, the turn. Do they have enough damage? Nine and Boxy in some trouble. They pull him back in. So they get the kill onto Boxy and they can't bring down the Tusk. And for all of that, Beastmaster is going to maybe, I mean, you'd like to think he should take bot tower. A level two living armor on this tower shouldn't be enough, especially when other heroes aren't coming in. Yeah, a couple right. more clicks. And yeah, in regards to map state now, Liquid take top tower, Tundra takes bot. They're able to mirror and keep each other in the kind of same game. We mentioned already drop-wise, oh, it is the same. Very annoying, that uh, Haste and being stolen. That's from the perspective of Liquid. From the perspective <laughs> of Tundra, that's really cool. <laughs> that's true. Fair enough. Oh. Well, Zai. Oh, that he's in some trouble. But the back wall onto three. There's a lot of illusions. These supports are dying. Nine needs to be careful. The snowball chase oh. down. All right. <laughs> Give Boxy Rubik some more. That was pretty cool. He's been having a hell of a game. Helps when you can use spells inside. Oh my god. Oh my god. The, the okie doke. Skinner didn't know. Skinner didn't know. Snowball he doesn't know where to go. Oh, snowball away. Put on your juke shoes. All right. It was bound to end at some point. <laughs> I mean, fair play, mate. Fair play. You know, you throw it on the ward. You, it, it looked like he was trying to maybe snowball dodge a stun, but of course it was right. a phantasm instead. Oh, you like the small plays there. I, I do. They, they, they bring me good joy. <laughs> All right, Tundra. Now looking for, uh, I mean, at, at this point, I feel like they're they're pretty comfortable. How do you feel like the sort of scaling of this goes as the game gets later and later? Yeah, I feel like for Tundra, they're going to be pretty happy throughout the scaling of this game. Right. Of course, you're like CK can maybe go like the Ags to deal with the overgrowth of Treant. Beastmaster will always have threat throughout the game because you can just isolate that front line. Ideally, for 33, it's going to be dealing with that Leshrac down the line. You don't want to be roaring up the, the Ursa, especially with the status resistance. 
but for Liquid it feels like as soon as uh, the Ursa gets to Battle Fury plus one, that's when you want to see the, the team kind of cross the river, try and break down the map and really punish Tundra. Nice. Nice little tower there. Tonight, tonight they're the coming player. out from Tusk. Yeah, so the punishment, and I, I guess that that's the thing, is like you think that they don't really have uh, that many answers for the CK. I mean, do you think that he can still have value on that, that Beastmaster even without uh, needing to necessarily roar the Ursa? It's one of those things which is, I think, if Ursa has a great game with right. items, he can brush off a lot of what Tundra has. Okay. So it's more on Tundra need to get to that point where they've itemized beautifully to then punish this Ursa on a couple key picks, mm -hmm. contesting that Aegis, and don't allow Liquid to enter the point where their draft plays itself, moving across the map, finding kills, right. utilizing the darks here. I think if Tundra ever disjoints that momentum, then they can just be insane a pickoff team, right? Tusk jumping in, CK exploding up another support. Like if you find them, Tundra can't kill them, but I am favoring Liquid still in, in regards to being able to group up earlier and just make these overwhelming plays. But you know, net worth wise, Tundra are just happily farming up, getting the free picks on potentially insane. You know, you'd like to think he should die in this position. Yeah, it you seems never likely. He's terrorize on him even. A nine, still chase, dude, this is crazy. Insania oh, no. just lives. Oh my oh, god, go. they finally get the kill. Snowball, nine, tries to escape, won't be able to it looks like, but they do get out on Soxa. So Insania is just being very annoying as this tree walking around, pushing out this bottom lane and the smoke that's moving over. Skitter finds one, kills off the Rubik. Can they find any more? Nisha is backing away. So instead, with this Helm of the Overlord, oh, just barely lost vision. Mickey gets out. They're going to try and take mid. Yeah, they have to play around this Beastmaster early. Like, this is the, the best timing for Tundra, at least, until the later portions of the game. It's before Liquid have the items. Beastmaster is one of the most dominant heroes running around the map, especially with the Helm of the Overlord. And they have an abundance of early damage with this Forge, be it the Seam and the Willow. But they're also respecting when this Treant's alive. We just saw it, right? Any living armor, plus 12 onto the hero, it's going to be so hard to kill them. So you can see Tundra trying to do a bit on the map, but also it's like, guys, we're not really ready yet. It's the Tundra way. Get a pick, back to the river, across the river, sorry, push out the lanes. I mean, I think the one really nice part that they also have on the side of Tundra is that Soxa's got some pretty decent farm. You know, 3,600 net worth on this hero at this point is in a decent spot because everything else of theirs is physical, it feels like, amongst the core player. You've got CK, you've got uh, Tusk, you got Beastmaster. Like, he's going to need to get those, like, drums of slum or whatever the hell they are, <laughs> or the Aghanim Scepter at some point because, like, that tree armor is just going to be so relevant. Yeah, I love the fact that he also went for the Veil on the Dark Willow. It's going to enable him and CM to pump up more damage in the fight. And you okay. mentioned they're a little bit physical orientated. So now it's going to allow the supports to scale into some of these mid fights. And that constant pressure from uh, Tundra on the mid lane. Yeah, they move on in, they take it down. Don't even get the deny onto it. Oh my God. Drop a fireball on him. Let's see it. That doesn't want to do it. And Nisha moves in. They thought about the roar, pops the, ooh. That just makes sure that they can get away. <laughs> I mean, to me, that says a lot about Tundra's mentality right now. Yep. It's very much, uh, you got the tower for free, pretty much, and, you know, the Raw was, yeah, it was there, but yeah, very much disengaged, you don't want to fight, and it really is reflective of them waiting for the for the bigger timing. You know, CK, he's got the armlet, he's got the Echo Saber, most likely should be disassembling to complete the BKB. Okay, chasing down nine, will get rooted, and then eventually killed, so Liquid on the move up top. Yeah, they're slowly starting to enter the game a bit more. You know, Mickey, he's got the, uh, the Battle Fury, he's going to have potentially Blink if he wants it, or he can wait to go for the, the BKB, but it feels like they're posturing for Roshan, yeah, already starting it with Nisha. With that said, the bird sees all, and it's just... Okay, they see and the bird dead, now. Yeah. There's a big bird outside, I think that's called the Dragon. Snake King, throwing out what damage they can. They're pump faking the Terrorize. This is not an easy Rosh to take. This is so hard for Liquid to go into it. You're going into the, the Terrorize of the Dark Willow, even just a, a Crystal Nova from CM from Fog, it's going to disjoint Liquid's ability to do Roshan. And yeah, I like the fact that they disengage from the pit. I think if Liquid forced this too much, it wouldn't have been pretty. And they don't really want to be staying around too long. And just look at the minimap. Look at how Tundra, they bring three heroes mid, but their cores instantly to the side lanes, farming up. So Liquid, yeah. they're bringing four or five heroes to posture at Roshan. Meanwhile, Tundra, they're just being a little bit more efficient on the map now, growing that lead from 2 to 4k. Just in how they're not overreacting to, to Liquid trying to make some objective moves. 
This is the thing that felt like happened in so many of these games that I would watch uh, from Tundra in the last couple of days here, is it's just, oh, nice. <laughs> the Bruce are getting in a little bit on the action there. Um, but the, the, it was just always split up the map, everybody else grouped together. Uh, Liquid, I want to see how they try and uh, deal with that. Um, of course, playing with a hero like Darkseer, they like the idea of taking these fights uh, if it suits them well and if they have their items up and online. We'll see if they can force those objectives or not. They're already kind of baiting Zion top lane. You've got both supports sitting behind him. I'd be very surprised. It'd be so uncharacteristic of Tundra just to, to wildly dive an off lane tier one and yeah, you already see it. Just moving back. Tusk going into the Deso. He's been behind the other two cores um, of Liquid, but of course his two cores very much on top. Ooh, we got a smoke. Just completed the BKB from CK. And this is now going to be the game breaking point. Whoever wins this fight should be able to move towards Roshan, get that Aegis if they have the resources available. And the prior bait on Darkseid top, he's already. Oh. Zai. Kind of he area. decides to walk back in. They see him right away. Gets rooted and pulled and going to be killed. So the quick move for the finish. Now 30 seconds, no Darkseer. Tundra, they have that Deso done. Do they want to buy back Zai to stop this? This is so uncomfortable if he does. Like, they don't have a tier 1 tower to move to. They've already taken mid and top. Yeah. They They're using literally everything. They understand the, the, the speed in which they must do it. They yeah. don't have an innate taker. So, use to like that tag team. Throw in the CMO. You've got the Veil that we mentioned earlier from the Willow. Like, they found one pick and bam, 20 minutes. The team that you'd expect to go have Roshan, Liquid, wasn't able to get it. Well, a very uh, good feeling when you can take that away from Mickey. The plus side, obviously, is that Mickey going for the Battle Fury, but after this play in the last couple of minutes, you can see 77. I mean, <laughs> as Roche goes, the probability is going higher and higher for Tundra to take this game number one. Yeah, honestly, I think I expected Liquid to be able to group a little bit earlier in this game, but just the way that Tundra has moved around the map once again, they've got the BKB now, a Mage Slayer to deal with the Leshrac. They've yeah, it's so difficult now for Liquid to, to just play with confidence. I think you might be looking towards double BKB is the timing that they want to do. Like Nisha and Ursa, once they have BKBs, they need to be decisive with their engagement. Leshrac kind of needs to bait himself in the fight to allow Ursa to lock onto that one hero. Because if it's not a clean engagement, you're yeah. going to get kited from the Willow, the, the Tusk, maybe even a disengage from CK. So. Yeah, an awkward part of the game now for Liquid. A little bit more patience is required for them to, to re-enter the game with some confidence. Boxy gets away there from the CK. Snake King manages to find Zai again, almost the exact same spot he died before. And slowed down, needs to get a surge away, but won't end up actually uh, committing for him fully. Top tower so, the Darkseer gets away from trouble and hunting. Oh my God, they found him. Dude, unreal. Nine just walks into the trees and finds a kill. Like, what is that? It's because of his <laughs> micro. He's utilizing his courier. He Items come out, he keeps the courier in the area. He respects the fact that Treant naturally plays this area. So yeah, just really forward thinking. I love when teams use their curers just more for delivering items. And of course, Tundra, some of the best in the world, skipping creep waves with couriers, scouting out the Treant, really good stuff. Boxy is going to have to get out of there. Darkseer has Greaves done now on top of the Vanguard. It's going to help him a little bit, especially against the CM, these slows. Even just a, a pesky route that hits him, going to take it away. But on the flip side, if you look at the other off lane at 33, he's already got the pipe. He's got the drum. Like he, he himself is very tanky. And he's itemizing to push his team deeper into the engagement. And your Liquid, the theme of the last four minutes is just run away. Ooh, Mickey, does he get out of there? It looks like he will. The last track, Nisha also gets out. And after a good early start, Liquid's struggling to come up with answers, but this is what we'd anticipate with the Aegis. They're doing a good job of waiting that one out. The net worth lead, it's not increasing from where it was. It's about consistent, uh, which is a credit to Liquid here. But Tundra, very much in a comfortable spot. Yeah, I think just... The, the speed in which Tundra from picking up a BKB got a pick off into Roshan. Oh, Nisha? He's already running away yet. Skitter is looking just to bully here. Trying to force the rest of them out of this area. Finds, well, it's just to the creep. Do they want to go on him? I don't think you do. He's got an Aegis, a Mage, a BKB. They're smoked up. It looks like they want to take this fight or something here. The wraparound's coming towards mid. They jump right away onto Snake King. 
gets roared. The back side, vacuum wall on to only the roll. one, but they find Skinner. He's dead. So the rest of the team being zoned out right now by Mickey. He goes down, but they manage to burn through that Aegis. Sai needs to back away from there. Pops the ulti, the run, the surge. The stun takes a long time to get him there. And in the end, they lose the Ursa, but they burn through the Aegis. Yeah, it's a really beautiful job there from Tundra. Nine. Gets one, and Boxy immediately going to get brought down. But Nisha is standing tall. I mean, without Roar, they feel a little bit more confident in this side, though. With the BKB, the tree armor, it's not enough to keep them alive. <laughs> Nothing can stop them at this point. Now he picked up the Blink Dagger, punished the Ursa, punished the, the Darks here. You just can't stop Nai from initiating and just ripping through Liquid. They're just not tanky enough. You can't Living Armor literally everyone right now. It's, right. Uh, it's so, pretty devastating for them. I mean, this is the thing that's interesting to me, though, is that Liquid opting to take that fight, they must have seen something there that made them feel like they could uh, go in and go for an exchange. Yeah, well, they had the BKB picked up on Ursa. He was able to initiate with confidence. Going on the right. CM, he used the Enrage to brush off the Roar, which allowed Boxy to steal it. But unfortunately, they weren't ready for the Blink reveal on 9. You know, when you bring up the big items, it's the BKB for the, the Ursa. But on the flip side, Tusk brought out the Blink Dagger, instant punch into a Terrorize, and what could have been a great fight for Liquid because Ursa was pretty much keeping away three heroes on the backside of the fight. Oh. He instantly just died off. Jumps up, high ground, the Shadow Realm, and then the getaway. Liquid, the but punish uh, though. They get the stun from the low ground. Nisha there for the kill. I think that was the attempt to punish the BKB being down on Skitter. Because yeah. nobody else has BKB on, on Tundra right now. Um, but a really good read by Tundra to back out of there and get out of harm's way. Yeah, we're now in the state of the game that either team can be aggressive. Because they have the comfort, the BKBs. They have the damage to rip through these heroes. And Zai getting roared in the top lane. Has Greaves after. Yeah, as well as stick charges, but didn't get a chance. Too much chain sun. And they pull back in another now. I mean, if they're losing heroes like this around the map, this is going to start to feel real bad for Liquid. Zai goes down. They pop the overgrowth. Another root. The CM ulti tries to pull him back into it. And in fact, that's enough for the kill. Tundra looking good. Boxy looking as well. tries to break the Blink Dagger, but they're going to be able to kill him off. Mickey trying to punish. Seeing if Nine's gone a bit too far. Pops his BKB. Gets one kill. Does he want to go for more? Doesn't look like it. It's just him and Nisha now. Has to run away from this one. Oh, Skitter. No, they're going to be okay. Oh, so close. But yeah, for, like, you can feel both teams trying to replicate each other in regards to play. Liquid, they want to mimic Tundra in that aggression. But then it's the reactor top. I think in a different world, Zai would have been able to get off his Greaves and his one. But in this instance, it doesn't happen. So now the TPs to top are fundamentally kind of, you know, unfortunately bad because he's already dead. They can't chase down. They don't have to turn around with Vacuum, which then leaves mid lane very isolated. So yeah, Tundra. Just being so clinical and understanding when Liquid are spread a little bit too thin and Nisha again oh. getting aggressed on. He's on the low ground, but they get the vacuum wall back. Fear on Anisha. That keeps him alive, actually. As Skitter swaddles away, tries to get out of there, but Mickey right on top of him. No BKB on the Ursa. Pops the enrage down low. Skitter oh, dead. BKB as well. And nine. He's in pretty far. Mickey is incredibly strong right now. Snaking, getting run down. Liquid, they just keep throwing bodies at Tundra, and <laughs> eventually, somehow, it's kind of worked. Oh, that's the beauty of this Liquid draft, right? Like, as soon as you get the BKBs, like we mentioned earlier, you can just run heads. As long as they're not getting split up around the map, getting picked off one by one that they've kind of been doing in the last five minutes, this is the draft to A, click down a lane and just find their kills. And yeah, that it, it's kind of happening. If anything, they need to keep the scrap going to force out that key spell used so then Roshan could be Liquids. Oh, they run in and spot them right there, actually. Insania passing by the Willow. Yeah, that, the scrappy nature, I think, is the thing that they're going to have to sort of hang their hats on as we take a look at this again, just right on top of Skitter. Yeah, I mean, it helps because Ursa, he's playing with so much confidence. He's got the BKB, the Enrage, and you can't really get rid of that. And of course, the the, the lift into then stun from the Leshrac as well, like the CK instantly blew up, and that's the engagement Liquid wants. This is what this draft is best at utilizing. It's yeah. the constant chase down and punishment of, does he care BKB? Do you have Roran Primal Beast? Are you even you know positioned correctly? And for Liquid, it Dude, took them longer in this. this game. The nullifier on three, three, two now. That he's gone for some of these items to try and just completely eviscerate the Dark Seer. It feels like. Yeah. I was... think we've got a really interesting dynamic in this one of like two of the most 
iconic Darkseer players. One for just like sort of doing it consistently good in Zai, and then the other for like innovating constantly uh, in 33. And seeing another like, little mini innovation to shut down that Darkseer with this Nullifier. Yeah, it's such a nice pickup as well. It Start against Darkseer, but also the Trian Protector as well. Like oh, yeah. whoever he goes on with that raw, you know, you're staying in position. Sure, like like basically for Ursa as well, when he jumps into the middle of the fight, if you throw the nullifier on him, it's just gonna prevent so many things, you know, his stacks as well, being Ooh. built up. This is a big jump now. They get the vision down, find the Beastmaster, this is a huge kill. If they can bring him down, oh, doesn't bash. have an answer, but they get him. Beastmaster dead, Skitter jumps away, but Nisha chasing down Soxa. I mean, Liquid are starting to run with some pace here. Does Tundra want to come back and fight this? I mean, with no Beastmaster, it's so hard to go back into that fight. 17,000 net worth of their just advantage. And this is Liquid just utilizing Vision beautifully. They throw the high ground ward at the start of that fight. Both teams sharing this ward spot, but Liquid just being able to a little bit more ruthless with their initiation. Yeah, Tundra, against the jump of this Ursa, they need nine to be in position. It needs to be, you know, some quick Warus punch into then disengage if they want to to not take the fight. But yeah, right. unfortunately, Tundra just aren't always in that perfect position because Liquid are being so ruthless. They are just, yeah, just relentless. And they really wanted a quick respawn on Roshan, but it's already gonna be like a minute 10 now. Everyone on Tundra is gonna be back alive. All spells will be available. BKB's up. It's gonna be a, a proper five on five now to, to try and break open this game. So to me, it reminds me of what you were talking about earlier of uh, sort of the, the split up farming pattern, that it almost feels like Liquid uh, to try and really punish that as much as possible are saying, okay, well, we're going to run at one of this groups of people and then force you to come together. And now you can see it's Tundra that are actually very much playing together. They're going to smoke up, it looks like, and try and take a fight. Where are they going to look first? They run right on, on in. Right on in, yeah. Smoke breaks. Insania knows that they're in the area. Nisha trying to hold this high ground, and yeah, they're just going to back out. Just another another tell from Tundra, right? As a team, when they're smoking up other teams, you're smoked up. You have the confidence of not being seen, run into the high ground, try and wrap around. But instead, Tundra, they make the play. Instead, it's like, you know what? We didn't find someone. We don't have to use the smoke to find a kill. We don't have to overplay our hand. They then retreat to their own side of the map and start getting up some vision themselves. I love just seeing how Tundra just doesn't force things when they don't feel it being the best opportunity. So 31 minutes in, it's a 3,000 gold lead. We've had a really pretty fast-paced game, it feels like. Uh, but this might be one of those moments where tensions start to get high and uh, kills start to become less. We'll see if it happens or not. Oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> We're gonna be. This game's a stall right now. It's uh, Roshan respawns. Lucky that accelerates oh. games, and oh. they're just running straight into it. Oh my god, this is crazy! And they're they're showing bottom on the lesh, so they're gonna take this so quickly. Liquid, they just they oh. have no knowledge of this. This is gonna happen. Four seconds stun. They don't have any way to stop this one. Shards blocking. The pings are there. They know it's going down. And another Aegis for Tundra. That's so incredibly awkward for Liquid, a team that was posturing in their own triangle to make this Roshan play. The fact that they didn't have some innate vision checking hero for Roshan, they didn't just body check it either. So for Tundra, you throw in a Hawk, you instantly see it respawn. You're gonna have the the edge, the speed to do it. The, the quick respawns giveth and taketh away. It is uh, a tough one there. Um, well, well, we'll have to see what these next couple of minutes look like because it was setting up to be, you know, potentially those posturing battles, but now in a slightly different phase in Tundra, everybody's heading bottom, it looks like. They're staying mid for the moment. Yeah, it feels at this point, you kind of want to have like a gem potentially picked up from Liquid. Throw it onto the left rack potentially once he picks up Shivas get rid of the wand and then you'll start being able to see out these hawks, kill them off from your AOE damage and just take away that vision advantage because yeah, Tundra just utilizes okay. quite nicely. Yeah, it's nullified. They get lifted out by Boxy because apparently that can't be nullified. <laughs> that can't be. <laughs> so nullified things are basically the overpower on Ursa, right. it's the living armor and then of course the shell and the surge. They're like the It was more a commentary on how freaking broken the shard yeah, is. Yeah, no, I know. I thought I'd just also <laughs> say like if I'm listing four things and then the fifth thing isn't then uh, yeah, here yeah, you maybe are. we should uh, get rid of that 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 fifth thing. <laughs> oh, also to be fair, like Rubik's only been good for like what, you know, like a week and a half. Maybe what? we should let no, but I mean, like, we didn't oh, really okay, see too I much see. of TI, right? DPC starts. Yeah, and that's true. So let's at least get him to week three at DPC, and then we can, you know, 
Listen, my brain doesn't think back that far, okay? I know that I feel pain now. <laughs> okay? You live in the present. I respect that. You don't, uh, you know. I don't have object permanence, these things that you talk about here. <laughs> the, yeah, Mickey liked my joke. Thank like you. Me. Hopefully Liquid also doesn't have that as well. <laughs> well, uh, it could be actually good for them, considering how that last couple of minutes went for poor old Liquid. But we'll see how this goes. Boots of Bearing completed now, and also a Lincoln Sphere on the CK. Another uh, pretty clutch thing that we've been seeing every now and then is those lifts by Skidder pulling them back into position so the Ursa can stay right on top of them. Going to help as well with the uh, the Abyssal from Ursa. He now can't just jump and isolate the, the CK by himself. There's a lot of uh, supporting items coming up from Tundra. You know, you just mentioned the Boots of Bearing. There's a pipe. There's now going to be a four star from the CM as well. Like, there's so many ways that if a hero is just jumped by the Ursa alone, they're going to be able to outplay. And of course, like you mentioned, the Nullifier, you're going to mitigate a lot of damage from Ursa as well. So, the whole game plan for Liquid, which was Mickey, you just go in and then Nisha and the lads will be able to kill behind. That's slowly fading a little bit for Liquid due to the items coming in. And that's why you see the confidence from Tundra, the smoke up. Like, they got the BKB on the Tusk, they got everything they need. Aegis intact as well for two more minutes. Liquid, they do have vision though in this bottom side of the do map. They know. Oh, they're now they are thinking that they're fine. They're very much not fine. Skitter pops ulti. Nisha decides to stick around in this, but Mickey jumps in, finds the Tusk, tries to kill him off. Nisha is absolutely fine. Nine tries to get away. Skitter down. That's Aegis already out of there. Snaking everybody from Tundra, trying to abandon ship. Can they get out in time? The Darkseer the shows up. Vacuum connects. They don't have the wall follow-up, but Nisha there to clean up. The BKB is out. The overgrowth is there immediately. Liquid starting to run wild. The Bash connects onto 33. All these high-priority cores are dying. Snaking bought back, wants to get back into this fight. It's not going to happen. Unbelievable performance. And now in a bit too far is Boxy, but they actually have the chase and going to be able to kill him off. So snaking with the dieback. Yeah, incredible fight from Liquid. It's because they're respecting their vision. This is a rare moment from Tundra where they try to initiate a fight, not checking the high grounds, not throwing down their own wards. It's very much Liquid with the vision advantage. Also, they're jumping at Leshrac who instantly rebuttal CK's aggression, half killing off the illusions, if not instantly killing off by the time that CK was looking to retreat from the fight. And then Ursa, quick jump onto the Tusk with the Abyssal Blade. Yeah, we're gonna see it here. This is all in Liquid's vision. Nisha hits a beautiful stun. These illusions are gone. And the speed that Mickey just punishes this Tusk, God. it's mode retreat. This Ogre Seal thing, by the way, get yeah. it out of the game, <laughs> or stop it from you know being active when you take damage. Because the fact that Nine was even allowed to leave this engagement, that is some OS Frog broken neutral light and stuff, but that's another story for another day. Yeah. I mean, the other thing here too is that Zai wasn't here to start the fight. I don't know if he was showing on mid or what, but maybe that was part of the you know decision making process. But now going up to high ground, we're back in the real world. Nisha has to back away from Skitter. They have again down a support a piece, but suddenly tier three tower taking a significant amount of damage down bottom. Liquid have turned the tide completely. Yeah, and this is now when you, you look towards the just the core for core matchups, right? Ursa v CK, Ursa loves this matchup. He doesn't really care about this late game damage. He's always going to be able to survive and be tanky enough. Leshrac as well, you itemize with a Shivas. You're going to oh. be able to brush it off and... Ooh, look at the bounce back. Look, oh, come on, 77%. That was zero. Oh, I love, I just, I love seeing it when it's wrong, you know? Big turn. Interesting. Very interesting stuff. We've got a Lotus coming out pretty soon here for the Darkseer. 37-minute um, marks. So the next round of neutrals are going to be available. Uh, I, I'm, I don't know. I guess the thing to me that seems so weird is I feel like I haven't really felt the impact of 33 in the last couple of fights. Yeah. And I, I mean, part of that, again, I guess that you're talking about is normally this hero provides you vision advantage to set up good fights. Last time they ran into Liquid Vision. Yeah, I think for, for 33 at least, the, his greatest strength was this early game taking away the Roshans, just suppressing the map a little bit. But when the game gets volatile and quick, Beastmaster doesn't really like being the reactionary hero. You can see how he's itemizing to cover that a little bit. But yeah, just I think there's also a little bit of a uh, disconnect between the aggression because for Tundra, it's a, beast, uh, a Tusk jumping in, a CK jumping in. And unfortunately, with these items on Beastmaster, he can't also follow in with his team. So it very much is... Two big cores for Tundra jump the fight, and the other three are kind of on the fringe, kind of throwing in some spells like, yeah, you got it, guys, you got this. Whilst for Liquid, all of their cores want to get into the middle, want to punish. So I think positioning is 
the hardest thing for Tundra to execute because when you're against this liquid lineup, when they have the items, you, it's just so hard to achieve. And it boils back down to that point of vision. Tundra, a team that have been beautifully utilizing it throughout TI and the DPC so far, have been falling short a little bit against liquid. They have been looking very good uh, on Liquid, definitely, and trying to, you know, sort of throw a wrench in the, the works a little bit. I, I think that, like you're talking about here, some uncharacteristic movements every now and then, and I'm wondering how much of that is by virtue. Uh, well, actually, I'll have to hold that thought. Skitter, the Yule Scepters are starting to come out. That is something that Mickey is going to be annoyed by here. So they can't get that instant blow up. Um, but I was wondering how much of that is just by virtue of sort of this run at you style that we're seeing from Liquid, uh, specifically against Tundra. Yeah, I think this needs to be the concept to beat Tundra. When you allow Tundra to push out the lanes and always have the crit waves in your face, that's when it's near impossible to, to out farm and outplay this team. You give them time to to use their, you know, big old brains to think about the best outcome. But when you're right. when you're just in their face, super aggressive, it's way more reactionary, a little bit more, less methodical. And that's where Liquid, they weren't able to achieve that in laning phase. It's why they felt victim to losing the first Roshans. But then when they got to the point of, we can just group up and run through the map, they're not giving Tundra this, this these windows to kind of get heroes out. And already look at the minimap now at CK, use his ultimate, just push out waves. Tundra now going back to the, the forms of comeback mechanisms that they right. rely on. And you can see here dropping down some wards. They see the vision and Mickey wants to punish jump. it. Can they get him though? Doesn't look like he's going to be able to follow up for anything extra. Nine was hoping to catch a sleeper there, but nobody's nearby enough. You can see he doesn't have ultimate. He was using it to push out all three lanes. Yeah. So they can't really fully commit to an engagement for maybe another 25 seconds. Yeah, it looks like they're more trying to take over some areas of the map right now. And well, Tundra recognizing, hey, Liquid's not home. We're going to take this creep wave and force you back a bit. And Liquid's doing the same top. Mix like, okay, you okay. want to go mid, I'm going to go top. Who's going to come back first? A classic Liquid base race for no reason. Yeah, Ursa vs Beastmaster. <laughs> Who's going to win this one? I mean, he did a good I mean, amount of damage up there. Yeah, it, it was good. You're not wrong. Oh, skip. He's nearby. Zai, vacuum. Soxa, lift. Oh, he got a little bit cheeky there. Sorry, that's your word. Skitter, silenced. Jump in. Nisha does what damage he can, but to get the invis. Nine went in, though. And the rest of his team not able to save him. The roar already used. They buy back now on the Dark Willow. See a multi? He obliterated there. Nisha backs out. And that looks like the, it's the end of it. Just where's the damage though? Unfortunately for Tundra, like the CK, he's not really able to do much. When Leshrac throws down his Shivas, his Pulse Nova, those illusions are dead. So Tundra, they're kind of feeling victim now a little bit to these fights. Liquid, as soon as you show, they're going to jump you. Oh, this would be a huge. This is dieback for him. The, the Hex is out. Oh, but the back in the wall. They weren't able to play Interrupt, but not for long enough. And now three heroes dead, no buyback. Nisha's like, let's go. Chase down, Skitter, does he have the damage to hold this alone? Again, it's just him and 33 for 40 seconds. How much can Liquid get done? That's one Rax, maybe two. The fact that no one bought back under that Nisha aggression, when the mid lane is oh. by your tier threes, that's when people should be buying back in. So Liquid, in the back of their minds, like, guys, they probably don't have it. What a huge win this has been. Liquid now taking I mean, again, you think about how bad the sort of odds were into the favor of Tundra going in and now double racks, potentially a third. Do they want to stick around for this third? It's a little bit scary as everybody's starting to come back to life. But to be honest, they were winning fights before that happened anyways. Yo, like, uh, here's the 50-50. Are they going to do it? Okay, no one's pinging it. They're going Roshan. I respect this. You get two racks against Tundra, going for the third. Now that would be too cheeky. So you want to disengage, play on the vision, and Roshan's up. They should be able to scout this out, Zai. You're outside the pit, boss. Throw your head in, Zai J indeed. You're going to get third Roshan. You <laughs> finally get one. And this is the point where Liquid's draft, if they ever got Roshan, yeah. it unlocks their draft to be 10 times more aggressive. It doesn't matter if this Ursa gets kited. You can't kite him for two lives. He gets the Axe, he gets the Aegis. 43 minutes into the game, 18k lead. Yeah, Liquid. Mm. They've, uh, they've, they're in. They're, they they've had a theirs. mage one. What a, what a freaking turnaround they've had here. Liquid playing fabulous Dota. Um, and T, I do have to apologize. I stereotyped you as a British person saying cheeky. 
Uh, apologies. I hope that you can forgive me. We can still be friends. We'll see after the game, okay? <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll take this off air, okay? <laughs> this is enough. not the time to talk about the cheekies. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Someone's going to think that's serious, actually. Uh, yeah, oh, no, I know, I know. It's fine. <laughs> 24 to 23, Liquid trying to close this one out. And Tundra, again, the real play that they have is just to keep trying to push these waves. But I feel like we haven't seen them be able to win a team fight since that fight right where we're at right now with 33 down here in the bottom lane. Yeah, and this is the point in the game where Tundra's philosophy of push out lanes and force people back, it's not going to work when you only have one Rex alive. Liquid are like, great, please take our bot lane. We'll get Megas instead. That's a trade that every team will happily take. And so they have to come back now. Mickey gets four staffed in. Yule Scepter there. Nullifier control. Do they have enough to bring him down? Still Aegis for a very long time. The vacuum wall on all of them. Oh, God, make it stop. It's not pretty. It's not pretty for Tundra, but for Liquid, it's everything they wanted. They have the Aegis still on him. Even if you kill Mickey here, it's not nearly going to be enough. They break the CM ulti, steal it. Boxy throws it back in their faces. Stick a fork in them, they're done. Liquid took care of the champs. I just absolutely, this draft from Liquid, it's relentless, it's aggressive. You need your team to have confidence throughout the entire game. If things don't go well for you, you go for the spells. And at the end, Zai, the five-man vacuum into the cleave of the Ursa, just swatting them out.